So we got one package this week. I mean, technically two others came. Um, I'll put this on the side here. Monster Hunter Generations came out on Friday. I didn't think I was going to fire it up and play it, but I did. So I guess, uh, yeah, I guess that's what I'm doing. But for today, we've got all of these. Let's go ahead and begin with Plastic Memories Volume 1, which is, of course, an Aniplex release. Let's see, I'm feeling flap right here. Get this open out so that we can take a peek at the inside. I'm not quite sure what this anime is about, and I guess before we go too much, let's uh, look at the full artwork. Not that there's, again, much to it. Hmm, I wonder if this says anything about... Oh, interesting. It's got Spanish subtitles. Not that my Spanish is uh, even passable. But this is the actual disc on the inside. Kind of reminds me of um, the regular Magic High. Kind of the colors, although this purple pinkish with some blue in it. It's not reminiscent of the DVD releases for that. I wonder where those are. And he of course doesn't look like his um, stoic unbeatable know-it-all, which is uh, why people probably both loved and hated that one, because you don't, you get mostly pushovers. You got proof of purchase, that thing, card, the standard cards, which again I've just not been opening. Next up, we've got a Bleach on Bleach uh, Blu-ray Season One. See, it's for the first time on Blu-ray. You probably wouldn't have known unless, uh, of course, you've been watching my show and you know that I would have bought it on Blu-ray if it came out any earlier. Give or take uh, the fact that uh, Right Stuff doesn't uh, ship things out on the release date, or they don't try to get things to arrive on the release date. So this is some people have had this earlier than I have, I'm sure. Quite a few people, probably. Anybody that pre-ordered it through um, Right Stuff. So we've got 1 through 7, 4 through 14. The disc of... Uh, the artwork is basic, but I kind of figure 15 through 21. It's kind of worthwhile just to see what we have here. 22 through 27. I'm not sure about what the content's going to be like for this, but it was a popular enough series, and so there it is in its uh, Blu-ray release. We've got a Yona of the Dawn Part 2, which is good because uh, I kind of want to watch this. Uh, according to the back, regions A and B. Probably consistent with the first. Yeah, that does say in English 5.1 surround, so that means it's also dubbed, which is what we would expect given a Funimation title. Although, again, you know, we've gotten a couple recent Funimation releases that aren't dubbed, and this is just one of the ones that did get dubbed. Yeah, DVD 1 is blue and DVD 2 is blue, while the non blue are Blu rays. Which can be a little confusing, but. Makes for some interesting variety in color. Actually, these are purple, very dark purple. Or. Is this one even. I guess this one is a close to black purple. Because I think, yeah, the previous one, the first set had some different colors as well. And then we've got a uh, Soft Tenny, the animation. Which uh, looks like uh, tennis. That's the tenny part. Or is it soft, like softball? Or soft tennis ball? Okay, the soft. That I don't know. All I know is it shows a tennis court and girls who look like they're dressed to do tennis, so it's probably tennis, but that's a strange name. Which might make more sense if I fire it up and find out. It's like the name of one of the characters or something like that. Uh, looking at the back, it's Japanese with English subtitles only. No dub. Blu-ray. We, of course, expect to be the same. Although, as soon as I get this off, the real question is if it's also region B, which 
Sometimes it happens with Sentai works, some Sentai titles as well. There we go. Uh, I guess uh, back. Region A. Japanese with English subtitles only. We got disc one, disc two. Hmm. I was thinking this might be the case because this was looking like uh, some hybrid work. So you can kind of see the same artwork there, although this is kind of lighter. So that's a separate one, and I bet uh, yeah, you can see her there and the green haired girl, which is here. So it's the same character art, but they're paired up differently between the DVD and the Blu ray versions, which is a very interesting way to do it. I think they've done things along those lines before. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, one more look around. And it looks like this is all of this week's anime DVD collection update. So, um, I don't think I started If Her Flag Breaks last week. I was kind of curious about it because the name, I wasn't quite sure what to make of it, so I kind of thought club-related stuff or probably also thinking of war zones and Flags sorts of things. Partially inspired by the anime Flag, which I've never watched, but I do have. It's kind of, that one's kind of notable. But, watching this one, it's actually a pretty straightforward a harem show. And it's kind of interesting because it kind of feels like it's been a while since I've seen such a straightforward one. It's definitely not the sort of thing that's very compelling. But I thought it was very curious and interesting. Like... Like, I wasn't quite sure what I thought about where it was going, I guess. And some of it was interesting and kind of working. Not necessarily as solidly feeling as some of the other stuff I've watched. But, of course, that's the sort of thing that's really down to personal preference. And I can kind of understand why some people wouldn't care for this. As the series developed, um... Basically, I think it started suffering from a lot of the same problems that uh, big harem animes like this suffer from. I think like, um, what is that one called? Uh, I guess I can't remember the name. It just starts with A and it's probably Angel something, Angel Tales I think it was. Where, um, you know, when they start building up the harem, then the personalities just feel less like a realistically developing scenario and more like a checklist. I thought this one was probably not as bad in that regard, but it was definitely solidly feeling like that, where it's... It's like the character dynamics don't quite work out perfectly. I think that's why you don't see as many of those, because it's tricky to pull off, and even when you do pull it off, you can probably have people who enjoy watching it, but at the same time, they don't really leave feeling fulfilled, per se. So, that's, I guess, the anime. It's very interesting. It kind of feels like it's thrown back to a lot of um, previous concepts uh, that I feel like the industry just doesn't pay a lot of attention to, but, yeah, it was kind of nice. So, I finally started a lull in the sea. The basic idea is, this is more of a pile of stuff to watch, and I've got lots of piles like that, but I was trying to knock this one down because it has things like this that are really thick, take up a lot of space, but if I spend the time to watch it, then uh, I actually clear up space here and then eventually reach a point where I'm like, okay, some of this stuff needs to get put away or put into other piles. So, um, the problem though, first of all, uh, this of course is I think a 24-ish episode series, because uh, I, I went through the first disc and I was nine episodes in. And I kind of figured, yeah, it, it's probably about right if it was a bit longer. The pacing would have been just right as well. Um, but my second disc was having trouble playing. And I don't know if this is a common problem. I didn't see a lot of reviews saying that. I didn't look too deeply. But <clears throat> I'm going to basically uh, try to replace it. And that is uh, trickier, easier said than done. It's in stock at right stuff. At least it was when I last checked. But I need to wait for the timing and I'll talk about the why of that later but uh, as for the series itself um, it's been a pretty nice slice of life so far it can be kind of rough in the beginning because it's a bit more angsty these kids are middle schoolers and they're going through strange emotions I guess um, and so you have a main character who kind of 
is the stereotypical guy who re- shows that sort of stuff through uh, anger. You know, he, instead of when it, when he's jealous or unsure or something like that, you have that guy yelling for no reason and doesn't look like he's actually as cool as he thinks he is by yelling and trying to sound mature. Something like that. Keyword there, trying. But it, for some reason for me, it didn't completely turn me off. I guess because it's kind of strange and I'm kind of wondering where it's going because it's not necessarily going uncomfortable places. But yeah, so the, the um... <clears throat> The angst is definitely very obvious there, but at the same time, uh, there's also a little racism element, at least here in the beginning of the series, that's kind of notable because you kind of have two groups of people who uh, think of each other in a kind of absolutionist terms a little bit. Not, not exactly like that, but it's more like there's a divide. There's people calling other people names and people doing things and kind of segregating but it doesn't feel like it's as fetishy as something like a crossing inch. You might remember I mentioned that one seemed to be going above and beyond. And this one just seems to be, well, these are just elements in kind of the everyday life. And it's not a permanent thing. There's a lot of friction, but it's making progress by doing it, I think. At least from the nine episodes, technically almost ten episodes that I saw. Um, and there's definitely interesting developments happening. I'm not quite sure if the series has a feeling of um, where it's going to end up. And maybe that's not a problem, because sometimes you'll have a series like this which introduces a bumpy romance at the beginning and everything is about how that bumpy romance is going to come to an end. But this is a, a more thorough slice of life, I guess, because there's a lot more nuances to all these things such that I don't think it's as obvious where it's going to generally be near the end. It's like, if you watch something else, you have a couple of guesses, okay, either he's going to end up together with this girl that he absolutely hates and she absolutely hates him, or something's going to happen such that <clears throat> she's going to pass away or something and he's going to grow because, you know, you got, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious that when two people are kind of the main character, there's other stuff that's added on that's kind of like about emphasizing that main um, relationship in the show. And this one, it's flowing quite a bit more. And again, you know, that's not necessarily um, a good thing for everybody. Not everybody would necessarily enjoy it more than the others because it, it still has that element of I'm not quite sure what the purpose of watching this show to fruition might entail. I'm still kind of trying to see because it kind of feels like there's little threads here and there about the two sides of this kind of working with each other but at the same time it feels like as important as it is, it isn't that important. It's very strange. It's been neat, but again, um, I'm coming to a stop until I can get a replacement. Technically, I have it on DVD, so I could watch the DVD versions if I wanted to, but, well, like I said, I've got something else I'm trying to figure out first. And uh, then I started Deno Coil, which um, I guess mostly because since I didn't finish Lola in the Sea, I really wanted to just start something else up, and I wanted something dubbed, because Lola in the Sea started up around the same time Monster Hunter Generations did, and I tried, wanted to get some goals finished, so I wanted a dubbed anime. So I looked at these uh, smaller Blu-rays on the top here real quick before I tried to move them over there to see what was dubbed. This was the only one of these four that was dubbed. Yeah, because uh, the Strawberry Marshmallow OVAs aren't dubbed, and while that might not seem like much material, I think I'm going to rewatch the Strawberry Marshmallow um, series because it's been a long time since I've seen that. Don't know if I remember anything about it other than, well, like I said, I don't need to talk about that stuff. But, um, yeah, so, so I guess that's all about why I chose this. Um, it's been a very interesting watch so far. It's I'm trying to think how I can pin it down because there's a kind of surrealness to it that I don't know part of it is 
the feeling, um, given the character designs, it kind of reminds me of stuff like... Damn it, I'm really bad about remembering names. Like, the anime last week I was trying to remember was Strain, or maybe it was the week before. This week I can't remember the name of the anime that I'm thinking of with uh, the little kids selected to all pilot the one big robot, and, of course, it's, um, you, can, you can kind of tell there's something um, malicious afoot about them being chosen. <clears throat> Anyways, it kind of reminds me of that sort of thing where you kind of, like, it has a more relaxed feel, but something kind of malicious going on underneath the covers. And this one I don't think feels as bad as that one. I think mostly it's just kind of hard to wrap my head around what's going on without explaining or spoiling stuff, because I guess the basic idea is they live in a world that's very severely um, augmented reality, so most people, in fact, I don't know if I've seen anybody that I know doesn't wear glasses, but most people seem to wear glasses that are basically built in computers that are able to hook into this augmented reality and see stuff. And I guess, kind of, hmm. And it's kind of hard to say what exactly I want to say there, because there's some things where it's like, well, I'd like you to kind of be uh, confused and revealed by that thing that you wouldn't expect. But... The basic idea, I guess, is that there's something strangely off about the town that our main character moved in, in terms of this digital stuff, and I'm not sure what all that means, but it does, um, it's enigmatic, and it's somehow related to this virtual aspect of things. It's not quite like serial experiments lane, as far as I can tell, where if you know what I mean when I say that, you know that, you know, that's kind of what made lane really confusing. This, um, seems to have solid divide, but it's, it's weird. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's not a bad weird either. I just uh, need to see where it's going. Unfortunately, I only have this first half of it. But I've been uh, starting up anime that I only have first halves of, so I'd like I get to watch Yona of the Dawn probably after this. So, outside of that, y'all have probably guessed, like, or actually I probably said as much, that I was playing Monster Hunter Generations. Um, that isn't what has caused my anime watching to be kind of lower. It was just a really complicated weekend. Actually, now that I think about it, I do have something to add to it because I also watched the second disc of Naruto Shippuden DVD set 27. Ugh. Yeah, I'm going all over the place here. Um, I thought it was pretty good. It covered... Um, it started going into a kind of historical stuff that contains some things we've already seen before, but not all of them. I, I mean, I think we're getting impressions of some stuff from different perspectives, which I actually think works out pretty well because it's a perspective we're actually curious about and interested in. <clears throat> and I think we're getting new pieces of information in terms of the history and the relationships between characters. Hmm. So, second disc of Naruto DVD, Naruto Shippuden DVD set 27. It was continuing to be good. I think the, I mentioned the first half was pretty good. Like, they finally got rid of stuff that was just kind of, like, bullshit to watch, and now it's like, okay, well, what's about to happen? Why did this other stuff happen? How did things end up the way they are? We're getting more information, and it's kind of nice. Okay, now the uh, Monster Hunter Generations and other related stuff. Yeah, I'm jumbled minds going all over the place, but, uh... Monster Hunter Generations isn't the reason why uh, delayed. I had just had a really complex, busy weekend, which was segmented here and there. This one slowed things down on Sunday when I wanted to make sure when I went into work if anybody else had the game and uh, there was the uh, Spot Pass, Street Pass stuff, that um, they would get a version of my guild card that at least didn't look trashy, I guess. You might have a different opinion, but because uh, I, I decided to go for the Banabara armor, because nothing else was really speaking to me in terms of 
looks and abilities, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's been complex. It's been a complicated week because obviously I'm not talking about the anime I pre-ordered and I, like I said, I'm delaying purchasing um, a replacement copy of A Lola in the Sea to kind of do a comparison contrast, see if it's just something off with my version or not. And, <clears throat> yeah, it's complicated because uh, some piece of shit stole my credit card number. And the banks are kind of in the be in between state where they can't print a temporary card for me. So I'm unable to set things up. Technically, I could pre-order all of my Amazon anime because Amazon supports the ability to link it to your bank account, which I did for this week's release because Amazon needs to get paid. But I don't want to finance all of my anime that way. In fact, I prefer Amazon not have any of that information and things went through the card and credit card um, fraud services and whatnot so that there's a usual pattern there and any unusual stuff is caught. So basically I'm having to play this week a little safe and careful. I still have all my money. There's no problem there. It's just access to it, it's not as direct without the replacement card, which hasn't come in yet, which is annoying. And it means that, you know, like, while I could pre-order some things through my other card, that one requires me to shuffle money across bank accounts, which has a good amount of delay, and I don't know what the limits are, but I'm more focusing on the problem of uh, paying for my cell phone and my internet through it as well as making sure I have um, a convenient way to pay for meals so I can continue eating uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, without juggling coins, essentially. It's, it's an annoying thing. It's really annoying, and I wish the replacement card arrived today. Tomorrow is kind of my deadline before I start having to definitely swap things over, and I do have to worry about the fact that I have some Mobile Suit Gundam orders, pre-orders from Right stuff. So once all of that stuff gets organized and working again, that's when I'll pre-order next month's stuff. <sighs> and I don't even know what all's coming out. I know for a fact that there's that from what I looked at, there was that Cat Kanojo X Kanojo X Kanojo Blu-ray release. I also know there was that um, the fourth Persona 3 movie, and I think the final because, you know, they have uh, seasonal motives, motives like uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter, and this one's winter. It's not the Winter Soldier. But I'm trying to think what's outside of that. Was the Haruhi Suzumiya set there? Because that's coming up real soon. I think maybe that was September. See, I can only speculate while I'm, well, I need to really be focusing on bills, basically. Just because <clears throat> the last thing you kind of want to do is uh, take hits for uh, bills not paying it on time. <sighs> I hate people that steal credit cards. Anyways, um, I guess... Uh, there's not a lot to talk about unless Monster Hunter Generations. I haven't gotten that far in the game, just single, mostly single player stuff far enough to fight your first big monster, because I spent a lot of time going for that Banabra outfit. Um, I'm, so I'm not quite sure what to think about it yet. I just, I'm just glad I can still play Longsword, because I guess that's all I do. So, I think that should be everything, y'all. Have a nice week.